Six miles north of Matlock lies Beely, a picture-perfect little village at the southern end of the Chatsworth estate, with pretty stone cottages clustered on quiet lanes. One of four villages used primarily for employees of the Chatsworth estate, the others being Enza, Carlton Rees and Pillsley, Beely was purchased by the third Duke of Devonshire in the mid-18th century. It is still home to many past and present employees of the Dukes of Devonshire. Its ducal heritage means that it has stayed largely unspoilt, with little in the way of new housing or development. Beely is small, but there is plenty of interest for the visitor, not least a lovely pub, the Devonshire Arms, and the popular family-run Old Smithy Cafe. Good morning. It's Saturday the 9th of April today. And I'm starting this lovely walk in the beautiful village of Beely. The Norman church, dedicated to St Anne, was largely rebuilt, although vestiges of the original work survive around the doorway, and its carved heads gazing down from the walls. Another lovely church. Just beyond the church car park, there was a squeeze style set back on the right at a footpath sign. This was the start of today's walk. Start as you mean to go on. Hello? Oh, we had a friend here. Hello? 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 Sally, I've got nothing for you. No food, sorry. Oh well, nice to meet you. I better get on with a walk. <laughs> I carried on up a slanting trod through fields, heading for Beely Hilltop. Just the end of from here. You can just see the church. The church spire sticks out like a sore thumb. It's beautiful. And Chatsworth House is just beyond the woodland there, but we won't see Chatsworth House on today's walk. But we will see it again on a future walk very soon. Lovely. Through a gate, I passed a farmhouse and cowsheds before turning left to emerge onto a track. 
A few yards to the right, I went over a stile on the left to make for the open moorland above me. It sure is a windy one today, but a beautiful day nevertheless. Wow, I think I should be quite lucky with the weather today. Possible chance of some showers later on, they say, but we'll see. I think it's going to be a good day. Well, I'd really like to give a big thank you to everybody who took the trouble to contact me recently. Over the last couple of months or so, I've had a lot of messages through my website, just to my email address, through Facebook, and comments on my YouTube channel. So it's been lovely. Thank you very much for that. And I'm really sorry that I didn't reply to anybody. The fact is, like every year to be fair, I've had a break from filming. I always have a break from filming, normally over the winter period. Um, one, because the weather's not so good, it gets shorter days, and certainly this year, you know, I haven't really been that inspired to go out and do any filming. So, an average year, I normally start filming mid to late March. And then, throughout the year, I'm only normally finish by October, November time. There's been the odd few exceptions in past years, but that's an average year anyway. And certainly last year, I broke the record for the amount of films I made. Wow, <laughs> I was really pleased with what I did. Um, but what I don't want to do this year is put any pressure on myself because I'm always conscious of the fact that I've got a list of places that I want to go and film. I think, oh, I must get these done by such and such a time, but I've just got to sort of step back sometimes and just think, there are times when I get up in the mornings, I just don't feel like going out and taking the camera with me. You know, so I'm just going to make films as and when, as I always say, really. But with regards to having a break up until recently, I mean, I did actually put a post on Facebook, on my Solitary Rambler Facebook page. There was also a, a post on my website. I'd actually put a note on the website saying about the fact that I was taking a break. And also, um, I'd actually put a post on the YouTube channel. If you look on the YouTube channel, look on the community tab, I did actually sort of say that I was currently enjoying a break from filming, so uh, probably a lot of people didn't see all those posts, but there you go. But no, apologies for not getting back to people, but I do appreciate very much that you took the trouble to get in contact with me, because it's nice to know that you still enjoy what I do, so that means a hell of a lot to me. Thank you very much. Climbing a steep, bracken-clad hillside, I eventually reached the top as I met a broad track, which I followed gently uphill to the right. So last year, I broke the record of filmmaking. I made a grand total of 29 films. Not only that, I actually shot them all last year and completed them all last year. The previous record was in 2018. And that was the year I went down to the Y Valley and Forest of Dean to make a load of films. I'd actually made 27 films that year, which was a record at the time. However, I actually only edited half of them that year and the other half, got done the following year, so it took me sort of over the course of two years to get all the films done. Whereas last year, in 2021, I not only shot all of the 29 films, I completed all the editing on them as well. And they were all, are all uploaded to YouTube too. The last three weren't actually published until the new year, but I had actually uploaded it onto YouTube um, before Christmas. So yeah, 
29 films, all done and dusted last year. Wow. Whether I'll beat that record this year, I don't know. As I said earlier, I'm not going to put pressure on myself, really. I'll just do what I, what I want to do, when I feel like it, and it's got to suit me, really. I've got to do all the filmmaking when it suits me. But, as I say, I have got a, an ongoing list of places I want to do, so... I say, I've got all the time in the world, really, haven't I? <laughs> This is where I turn off the main track. I'm going to follow this path on a little detour. There's something up here I've never actually visited before now. So uh, this is the first for me. It's exciting. So even though I've been living in the Peak District for a long time, there are still lots of places I've still not been to. And this is one of them. gate or there's a, some steps over the wall so I'm going to take the more challenging route just because I feel like doing it. Ah, there we go. Having crossed the Tussock Moor, my path continued beside a wall which bordered Bunkers Hill Wood and climbed past the end of Harland Edge to a crossing track at the top corner of the plantation. To my left, I had views over towards Kerber, Gardens and Birchin Edges. My way was to the right, following the sign to Hobhurst's house. Hobhurst's house. Not really a house as such, <laughs> it's a burial mound. Interesting. So I've never actually been up here before, so nice to see it for the first time. This Bronze Age barrow on the highest point of Beely Moor is unique as it is rectangular rather than the normal round shape. The curious name Hobhurst's house refers to a mythical hobgoblin who haunted nearby woods. The barrow was excavated in 1853 by Thomas Bateman, the Barrow Knight. The dig found a stone-lined grave containing some scorched human bones plus some lead ore. Well, that was a nice little detour up to Hobhurst South. To say something I've not seen before. Okay, just got to retrace my steps down to the track now. Blimey, that's not safe. <laughs> hey. Oh, this is where I go on my ass. Wait for it. <laughs> Flipping heck. How rocky is that? Oh. Carefully done it. Heading back towards the broad track I left earlier, I bore left to head towards the trees in the distance. So today is Saturday the 9th of April 2022, and I was actually planning on doing this walk last weekend. It was a gorgeous weekend. Unfortunately, however, I had Covid. <laughs> Covid finally caught up with me. Flippin' heck. I mean, I know a lot of people that have had Covid and uh, thankfully all the people that I've known in recent times, certainly, um, it's all been just mild symptoms, you know, no hospitalisation. But I must admit, whilst I did have it, even though I'm sure I had it no worse than anybody else, oh, flippin' heck, I was rough. 
I just felt knackered. It was just like all the energy had been sapped out of me. And it was like flu. I remember having flu back in 2016. And uh, it just completely floored me. Just had no energy to do anything. So yeah, I've only just actually recovered from COVID. Uh, yesterday was the first time I actually went outside. I did go outside earlier in the week, but that was just to put the bins out the front. <laughs> so yeah, but I suppose at least now I've had COVID. That hopefully means that my immunity system will be better. <laughs> At the end of the track, I climbed a stile beside a gate to cross to another gate opposite, where I entered the trees of Hellbank Plantation. This is a very pleasant woodland walk. Ah, very muddy. Oh yeah, very muddy indeed. <laughs> Wee. And quite thick as well with the vegetation. But very pleasant indeed. Anyway, I think now is a good time to give a shout out. And I'm going to give a shout out to Dave and Jean. Hi Dave and Jean, hope you're both keeping well. Now Dave and Jean, they are actually ex-Matlock people but they moved to Western Australia, I think they said in the late 1960s. So, uh, yeah, they keep in contact fairly regularly, which is nice. Nice to hear from you both. Um, but they actually, their brother-in-law, I know well, and that's Stan. Uh, Stan lives in Matlock. I've known him all the years I've lived in Matlock. Lovely chap. Stan must be the fittest guy I know. Because <laughs> he's always walking up and down the hill in Matlock. Must do that every single day. Um, he's walking his dog. So I sometimes see him when he's walking his dog now. I don't tend to see him in the pubs anymore. That's how I first met Stan, really, was through going to the Duke of Wellington, because we were both regulars there. Uh, and since then, um, Stan drinks in the thorn tree. Uh, and I sometimes go in there, not very often now. But uh, yeah, Stan's a lovely chap. And to say, he is the brother-in-law of Dave and Jean, who very kindly contacted me many months ago. As I say, I still hear from them now and again, which is lovely. So, nice to hear from you, Dave and Jean. And uh, thanks for getting in touch. Hope to hear from you again very soon. My path eventually met a lane, where I crossed to a bridleway opposite which, for three quarters of a mile, ran pleasantly between walled fields below Falling Edge. Curious. Hello. They're probably thinking, who's this stranger in our field? <laughs> uh. Hello. 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 How are you? Hello. <laughs> you can't follow me, I'm afraid. Yeah, because I'm going over this style in a minute, so... I always like to meet the friendly locals. <laughs> the field, the path drops steeply through smelting mill wood. Emerging from the trees, I continued in the same direction across the meadows, as I headed back towards Beely just ahead of me.
I am now descending back into Beely, which means I'm nearly at the end of the walk. Oh, let me neck. Oh, it's a tight one. <laughs> well, yeah, this has been another lovely walk. I've not done this particular walk before. I've done walks around Beely before, but uh, I've certainly not been up to Hobhurst South before, as I said earlier. But uh, now that I'm just getting to the end of my walk, I'm going to say something that I don't normally say. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but uh, I will just say now, on this one occasion, if you like this video, please click like below, please leave a comment, and please consider subscribing to my channel, because if you subscribe to my channel, that really will help me out a lot. <laughs> I don't normally say that, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not comfortable saying that. I know a lot of my, a lot of my fellow YouTubers say that, which is great. Uh, but I've never been comfortable saying that because I feel that if people want to watch my videos, they will do. And if they want to subscribe, they will do. They don't need me to keep reminding them and saying, subscribe to my channel. That's just my personal feeling. I'm just not comfortable with that. But as I say, on this occasion, I've said it. <laughs> there you go.